Hey, it's good to see you. I am back home. We got back yesterday and Boop is in here. She has been following me around since I got back last night. Well, initially she wasn't that excited to see me. At first, all the cats were kind of freaked out when my, my younger son and I got back last night. My older son picked us up at the airport. We got back here about, oh, seven o'clock last night, roughly. And um, at first they were kind of freaked out. Like they didn't, they didn't want to get anywhere near either of us. They acted like they didn't know who we were. Yes, you did, Boop. She's over there looking at me. She's on the bed. She's laying on some of my, my souvenirs that I brought back. I laid them all out on the bed. We had the best time. Well, I had a great time. I think I had more fun than my son did. He had a good time, but I think a lot of it was just a bit more than he cared to enjoy. But, um, you know, we, we I think we both had a really good time. I know I did. And um, so, but we, we got back and it's so weird because, it, it, so we got back last night and I was unpacking. You know, when you get back from vacation, somehow... And maybe, I don't know, maybe you're like me. I don't know how we generate so much laundry when we go on vacation. I came back and I swear I'm going to have like 47 loads of laundry to do. I don't even know how we had time to wear all those clothes. But I came back with just a ton of laundry to be done. So it's, you know, so I, I got back. I instantly started putting stuff in the laundry and getting that going and unpacking the suitcases and trying to get everything put put away. And I've lost my hairbrush. I can't find my hairbrush. And I know damn well I packed it. I know I, it, I did. And I'm thinking it must have gotten left in a pocket somewhere in one of the suitcases because I can't find my hairbrush anywhere. But I distinctly remember I put it in the big suitcase and it was one of the last things I packed because I did almost forget it. I happened to go back in the bathroom and I saw it on the counter and I realized I had left it in there. So that was one of the last things I packed and I put it in the big, the, the bag that we were going to check. I, put, I know I put it in that bag and now I can't find it. So I have a spare hairbrush I can use, but I'm kind of bummed out because I, I really like that hairbrush. I'll find it. So anyway, <clears throat> my throat's all messed up. I had a wonderful time. It was everything I hoped it would be. It was definitely like a once in a lifetime trip. You know, I, it's not the kind of thing I would do on a regular basis. Do I think I would ever go back? Possibly, possibly. I would do some things a little differently. I'm glad we stayed at Caesars Palace. My only complaint about staying there was that, and it's this way on purpose, I know, there's nowhere around there to eat that is not hideously expensive. And you, there's a refrigerator in your room, but it's just a mini bar. You can't put anything else in it. So, like, you can't go get something and stick it in the refrigerator and have it later. Like, just you can't put anything in there. There's You can't. Um, that that kind of sucks because, you know, I don't like paying a lot for stuff. So, that was kind of uncomfortable. I mean, I did it, but I wasn't happy about it. I have to add up all my expenses and I've got all my receipts for everything, all the Ubers, the meals for myself, because for my accountant, because actually since I made content while I was out there, I can count a certain percentage of this trip off of my taxes. It's not a big, it's not a lot, but I can count a little bit and I will take whatever I can get because if you've ever been self-employed, you, you know that the government takes a big wet bite out of your ass every year at tax time. So anything I can count off, I, I try to do, you know, I try to do it. So part of this trip is tax deductible. It's not, a, it's not a lot, but I'll take what I can get. Anyway, I have to go through all of my receipts, but I can't, can't, I can't count off anything for my son, which is fine. I bet, so I tried to keep my receipts separate. Anything I paid for for myself, I tried to keep that separate so I could separate it out. So I'm going to have to sit down later and go through my receipts and get real about how much I spent I, like, I don't want to think about it, but I have to for tax purposes. So anyway, but yeah, since I made content out there, it's take little, like a certain percentage of it is considered a business expense, but not, not a lot. Anyway, but I'll take what I can get. I don't know anybody who pays more taxes because they enjoy it. So um, anyway, so I'm going to have to go through all of my receipts and whatnot. But I, I had some interesting experiences and I thought I would just talk about air travel a little bit. Now, I am not a seasoned flyer. I am not somebody who even flies once a year or every five years. I'm really not. I have flown very few times in my life. 
it's just, you know, my life is just, there's just not a lot of air travel in it. You know, I, it's expensive and, you know, I can't afford to do it a whole lot. And for most of my adult life, I couldn't afford to do it at all. So I didn't, you know, like I can't afford, I can't afford to fly anywhere. And if I could afford it, I wouldn't be able to afford to do anything when I got there. So I just have to fly back home. So you know what I mean? So I don't fly a whole lot. So my, my perception and my experiences in air travel may be a little different from people who fly all the time. I'm sure they're different. I'm sure they are. And I'm sure there will be at least one person who has something critical to say about me talking about air travel. And you want to call me a, a bumpkin or a hick, you go right ahead. It's fine. I'm not really worried about it. I have definitely been called worse by people smarter than you. So um, people who could come up with better insults. But um, so whenever you talk about air travel, people, some people just get really sedity about it. They get really snooty about it and they have to talk about their experiences and how much better theirs are than yours and it's annoying as shit. Boop, what are you doing? Hey, Boop's coming over here. Um, oh, sorry. She likes to lay in this little corner over here, but I had a, did you want the box? I had a box of jewelry in the way. You can lay in the corner. Anyway, they were kind of freaked out when we first came back last night, but she's been following me around. She's been my little shadow ever since she got over the initial freak out of seeing us back here because we were gone for five nights. <laughs> five nights at Freddy's, five nights in Vegas. So five nights was about perfect because I still have, I have today, tomorrow, and Sunday to kind of get back right because I feel weird. I feel weird being back here. I'm, I feel kind of disoriented. And my, my time, you know, it's, there's a three hour time difference. So I got to get back on this, in this time zone. I had a really hard time going to sleep last night. I really, I, I just could not go to sleep. I probably went to sleep about one o'clock this morning. Um, it was tough. But anyway, so yeah, people, people feel, they have, people have strong feelings about flying, you know, air travel. And, um, you know, some people, some people, if you don't fly a lot, they're going to look down their nose at you. They're, they just have this attitude of, well, <laughs> heck, you know, a lot, some people are like that. They just are. And that's fine. I don't care. But I wanted to share some of my observations about flying, being in an airport, being in a plane, getting to the airport, all that jazz. So I've been to where I, in yesterday, what? You can't get up on top of the door. She's looking at the top of the door like she wants to get up. Let me go let her out. So we were in the Harry Reid Airport in Vegas. Then we landed in Charlotte. And then I flew out of PTI, the Piedmont Triad International Airport here in Greensboro. Look, it's White Castle uh, ketchup. <laughs> I ate at White Castle twice and I really liked it. My son didn't like it. I thought it was pretty good. Anyway. Um, I, I went through security with two of these packets in my purse. I totally forgot they were in there. <laughs> Whoops. Does that count as a liquid? I, I'm sure it does. I didn't mean, I totally forgot I had these in my bag. My like my little crossbody bag. Anyway, so three airports yesterday. And the first thing I noticed in the airports, the first thing that hit me in the face was everybody has nicer luggage than I do. Everybody has nicer luggage than me. <laughs> I am looking at these people's luggage like, wow, they have the kind that spins 360 degrees and they walk with it spinning like this, like they're walking their little luggage dog. You know, they're walking it off to the side like this. Dink, dink, dink. I'm pulling mine behind me. My luggage has wheels, but it doesn't spin. It's just, you just pull it behind you. And it's bags that I've had since, when did I get those bags? I got those, I got some, I got this luggage when we were getting ready for our cruise and that was in 2018. And that's when I bought those bags. I'm gonna tell you, putting wheels on luggage was the smartest thing and I don't know why the hell it took so long to get to the point that we were putting wheels on our luggage. I mean, think about it. Suitcases back, you know, 30, 40 years ago, most of it didn't have wheels. I'm not saying none of it did a lot, but a lot of it didn't. Suitcases, you carry it by the handle. You know, that's why they call it luggage. I guess you're lugging that shit everywhere. And I'm so, I think wheels on luggage is one of the greatest advances we have ever seen in, you know, human history. Just finally putting wheels on luggage. And then the wheels that spin all the way around, man, that's like next level shit right there. I am so impressed. And my luggage does not do that. 
And also, my bags, when they're packed, they're, they're lopsided. Like, they'll fall over. You have to hold them up or they'll fall over, and it's annoying as shit. Like, I can't stand that. They don't stay upright. They fall forward because just, I don't, just the way they're made. Um, so I'm looking at everybody's luggage and I'm just, I'm just amazed. I'm just watching all these people zing past me with their little bags. I'm going, Ooh, I like that one. <gasps> Look at that one. I like that one. And I'm like shopping. I'm looking at people's luggage like, Oh, I want something like that. Ooh, I like that. And my son was getting, he was getting really sick of me doing that. Like mom, stop. You don't need any luggage. We have luggage. You don't need those bags. I said, I know that. I know that. And ultimately I won't buy any luggage. I won't. Now I will go on Amazon 30 times a day looking at luggage and going, Ooh, I like that bag. That looks like it would be really great. You know, like the hard sided bags. Ours are not. They're like the smushy canvas rolly bags, you know, with the thing that pops up, you know, and they're, they're, it's just like cheap luggage, but honestly, and this is why I won't buy any luggage. I don't go anywhere. I really don't go anywhere. So what is it? You know, it doesn't really matter. As long as I have something that will contain my stuff and get it from here to the beach, that's pretty much the only place I ever go. And I just have to chuck it in the car and then take it into wherever we're staying and then chuck it back in the car and bring it back here. I do not need anything beyond what I already have. Now we'll tell you what I did for this trip. I wanted a larger bag and I had one that was part of the luggage that I bought when we went on our cruise, but my younger son ended up using it, using it as like a backpack at school and it slowly got destroyed over the school year because it was, it was a cheap bag anyway. It wasn't made very well and it just kind of fell apart. And then he took another one of my big bags and did the same thing. Like it took two of them to get through one school year. And they just wore out because he would wheel it from here to the bus stop and back and then from the bus stop and back home and it was full of stuff. And like I say, they were very cheap bags. It was like the cheapest stuff I could get. And they just kind of disintegrated over the months. Anyway, so I wanted to get another bag. Like, here's what I'm thinking. We will each have a carry-on bag. So again, we were there for five nights. But I thought it would be good to have another bag that we can check to put stuff in, like souvenirs and whatnot. And what we'll do is, and I got smart and I'm really glad I did this. I bought a bunch of snacks and I put them in the suitcase. And um, so then we ate the stuff while we were there and that left a bunch of space for all of our souvenirs and it worked out perfectly because I had plenty of, plenty of room to put stuff like a, a Vegas chicken. Look, it's a Las Vegas chicken. I'm not squeezing it because it makes a loud noise. And oh, we went to Omega Mart and we got an energy drink. Wake up, <laughs> please. <laughs> Omega Mart. I cannot wait to tell y'all about all this place. It's like an art exhibit. And I did not know what to expect. Quite frankly, I thought it was going to be really stupid and I was going to hate it. I had a blast. I had so much fun at Omega Mart. It was the coolest, weirdest place. I had some coasters, some Caesars Palace. Anyway, I have a whole bunch of stuff over here, but I'm going to do a whole video showing that stuff on my other channel. I have all kinds of shit. But uh, what was I saying? So I wanted a big bag, like a, like a 30, 28 to 30 inch tall bag to check with lots of room in it. And I started looking around on Amazon at different bags and I'm going, I don't want to pay, you know, 150 to $200 for a big bag. Like I, I don't want to, I just don't want to, you know, I do what I want and I don't want to do that. So, but I got lucky though. I was at Goodwill one day and I found this giant bag and it was exactly, exactly what I wanted. And it has tons of pockets in it and the interior is paisley and it's really cute. Um, it's a, well, it's not in here anymore. It's an American living uh, suitcase and it rolls and it works perfectly. It's in wonderful shape and it was only $12. Now I did bring it home and leave it outside for like three days just to make sure there were no critters in it. And I sprayed it down and I, I inspected it very thoroughly before I brought it in the house. Like I just want to make damn sure there are no bugs in this thing. It was fine. I never saw any, but I left it outside for three days on the porch anyway. Opened it up, you know, had all the compartments open and just left it out there and then sprayed it down and checked it again before I brought it in the house. Anyway, it worked perfectly. It was the perfect size and it was only 12 bucks. Now, is it as nice as the suitcases in the airport? Hell no, but neither were any of our other bags. Um, you know, everybody's rolling around and they have their little suitcases and they're just, 
they just look so suave. Like, damn, y'all just look like you just got your shit together. It's another thing I noticed in the airport. Everybody looks like they just have it all together. And I'm over here just a mess. Like, I'm dropping shit on the floor. My suitcase falls over every time I let go of the handle. I don't know where the hell we're going. The gate we're always going to is in some funky place. All the other ones are in numerical order. And ours, for some reason, is like that away. Not near any of the other ones with similar numbers. Like, what? So, you know, I feel like everybody in the airport, number one, they have nicer luggage. You know, they have their nice bags, and I'm rolling around with my little, my little poor mouth, little Oliver Twist bags. <laughs> Looking like I just crawled out from steerage off the Titanic. <laughs> Sorry. This is my first thought, like, Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Y'all have nice shit. I'm going to tell you now. And they all look like they have it all together, man. Everybody knows where they're going and everybody is getting there and they're, or they're sitting at the food court and they're eating and they got plenty of time and they, they, nobody looks confused. Everybody knows exactly what they're doing. And it's just, it was impressive. I, you know, I like to watch people. And so we had some time in the airport going to Vegas and coming back. We had a layover of about an hour or so. So I had some time to just kind of sit and just watch people, which is one of my favorite things to do. If you, if you want to enjoy watching people, go to an airport. It's really interesting because you see just like a cross section of humanity in there. The only other place I know of that you can go to where you can truly see that, like just it's like all of humanity in one location. Go to a tire store. Because here in the USA, you know, I know it's not this way everywhere, but in the USA, most people drive. They have a car. And eventually, you're going to need tires for your car. And unless you have somebody to take your car to go deal with it, you go to the tire store every now and then. And you're going to see a little bit of everybody in the tire store. That, that's the only other place that I found it very interesting to, to, to watch people is in the tire store. The airport is more interesting to watch people because they're on the move. And they're all going different places for different reasons. And they're in, you know, they just got different feelings about it. Most people in the airport, though, they look like they've got their shit together. But they also look like they're just over it. They're just so, everybody's just like, it's pretty much everybody. Everybody is just done. Just freaking done, man. I want to be out of here. And I get it. And I'm not saying I didn't look like that because I certainly did at several points. Like, man, it's just, oh my God. And uh, so, nicer luggage, they got their shit together. And also, I have found that there are people in the airport who are very different. They're very different in the way they, they handle everything and the way they interpret things. There are people in this world who walk without a care. And they stop for no reason. And they'll look around. And they don't walk in a straight line. They do this right here. And they take up the whole walkway like this. And they are just oblivious to everyone around them. And you know where these people are? These people are right in front of you when you're trying to get through the airport and you need to get through it in a hurry. That's where these damn people are. They are like damn Snow White. Oh, 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 oh. And they're just... Doo, 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 doo. They are completely oblivious to everyone around them. And they'll just stop. They're, you know, it's like... It's like you're in an artery and we're all blood cells. Bow, 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 you know, and you come up to an intersection and it's just people are doing like this right here. They'll just come to a dead ass stop. They just stop. And then there's like a pile up of people behind them. You know, you got suitcases and neck pillows going everywhere. Just a crash of people. They're oblivious to that too. And then they just toddle on off. Da -da -da. Leaving just a wake of destruction behind them. They have no idea. They have no idea these people. I want to smack them upside of the head with a bagel. Like, you just, you suck. I'm going to hit you with my $7 bagel. You asshole. Why don't you, if you look, if you want to walk like that, go way to hell over there in that dead space and walk over there. Do not walk in this main thoroughfare right here. Damn. These people are there in no hurry and they don't want you to be in a hurry either. And they got their, they're just big. Somehow they just walk big. Like their arms are going, their bags are just whipping around. And and they're, they're just, you know, just, they're in no hurry. They are strolling through the airport like they're in a park. It's like they're in a beautiful meadow. And they're just, oh, and they're just looking at everything. Oh, like, what the hell are you looking at? 
Because eventually, I mean, I like to watch people eventually. It's like, will you please move? For God's sake, and you cannot get around them. Because like I said, they're, they're doing this serpentine move through the airport. They're not walking in a straight line. No, they're just, they're, they're just doing this right here. And what's worse, too, oh, and I hate this. Sometimes these people get, they're in a group. And they will walk two, three, four abreast. And it's just like it's like a wall of oblivion. They're just walking. And none of them give a damn. They don't give a hot damn about anybody else in that airport. And they're all walking just all together. Like, can you tuck it up? Can you at least be a little bit more aerodynamic or something? No, no. They got to walk all side by side down the little walkway. Two, three, four, five of them just da 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 <sighs> and that's how they walk through the damn airport. And I want to kick them in the ass. I want to kick them right in the ass. I just like. <clears throat> and then they'll stop to chat like God almighty. And I, I did run into one lady and she looked at me like I was the problem. Like you just came to a dead stop. And then somebody, they didn't hit me, but they kind of bumped my leg. Anyway. So, I have found that, that there are people in this world who truly just, they have no concept of anyone else. They just, they don't. They don't. Now, I would tell you, I did it and I'll tell you what I really enjoyed. I had a window seat on the plane to Vegas. And I had the window seat from here to Charlotte. And I let my son have the window seat on the way back so he could see out better. And then he ended up not really looking out at all. He spent the whole time watching a movie on his phone. Like, I could have sat there, man, because I really enjoyed looking out the window. And I, you know what else I noticed on the planes I was on? Nobody was looking out the window. And I'm going, this is amazing. Look. And I understand if you fly a lot, maybe you don't care. I, I don't think it would matter. I think I could fly every day, and I would still want to look out because it's just so cool. How often do you get to see that? Well, even if I got to see it every day, I think I would still find it to be fascinating. Like, and you know what I really enjoyed? was watching the landscape change. It was, like, it was like watching a really slow movie. And it, the flight was uh, from Charlotte to Vegas. It was over four hours, I believe. And, uh, and it was just neat to watch the landscape just slowly change as we went further and further west. It was so cool. I took, I took a lot of pictures from the plane, even knowing like, this is stupid. You know, you're never going to look at these pictures. It's not the same as being there, but I just felt compelled. Like, no, I want to take this picture. I want to, I want to save this somehow. Look at this. And I spent most of my time, I didn't sleep at all. I, you know, I wasn't looking out the window the whole time, but I spent every few minutes I was looking out just like, wow. And I'd get bummed if we were going over a lot of clouds, you know, cause you couldn't really see anything. But then that was kind of cool too. Cause you're above the clouds. It's like, I, it looks like I could just walk out over those clouds out there. I could just lay down on those clouds and take a nap. It just looks like cotton, just look like a fluffy cotton mattress or something. Just look at that. And just to watch it change, it was just the coolest thing. Nobody looks out the window. I mean, you can't, I couldn't see everybody on the plane, but I'm looking like, nobody, this is amazing. Y'all look, ain't nobody looking out the window. Now, I am a bit of a nervous flyer, but I got a little bit better about it. The takeoff just always freaks me out a little bit. I was the only one who seemed to really, after I got over the freak out, I really enjoyed the takeoffs. The landings, not so much, but I liked the takeoffs. And I thought they were super cool. You know, when those jet engines kick in and it pushes you back against the seat. You know, that's just, that's just so cool to me. I, I, I don't think I would ever, I don't think I would ever get tired of that. I don't think I would ever just be like, Ugh, whatever. Because most people on the plane are just like, you know, they got their phone. They're just like, this is amazing. Do y'all not notice? And I'm looking out the window like, this is beautiful, look. They don't care. They don't care. Like, how do y'all not care? This is so neat that we get to do this. Look. And again, I don't think it would matter whether I flew once every decade or once every day. I think I would still be just as fascinated to look down there. Like, how often do I get to see this? This is so neat. And going over and seeing all like some little bit of farmland. And then the further you go, the, the more beige everything looks. Like all the green kind of goes away. And this is more and more beige as you get closer to Vegas. Like, wow, look, at it looks like, it's like a desert. Oh, it is a desert. It's a Mojave Desert. <laughs> I, had, I had so much fun on the plane. And another thing I don't understand about people there are three scenarios in life, and I, I know there are more, but these are three, and I added this one to my list. The, things that people do that take a lot of time that I don't understand. 
And I'm sure there's an explanation. I'm sure there is. When the plane, when, when it's time to get off the plane, so you have the overhead bins, right, with your stuff in it, your carry-ons and whatnot up in the, you know, in the bin. What takes people so long to stand up, get out of their seat, reach up in that bin, get their shit, and walk off the plane? What in the blue hell takes so long? Because we, okay, we were on the 10th row on the plane. We were not in first class. I thought about doing first class until I saw how much more the tickets were. It was about $1,000 per ticket more to be in first class. Like, yeah, we don't need first class. Don't worry about it. We'll be back here in a sardine can. I did pick seats so that were closer to the front. It was more expensive, but we had more leg room and we didn't have to go back as far. The whole damn plane's getting to the same place at the same time. I mean, I wasn't willing to pay for first class, but I thought I'll at least pick some seats that are a little bit closer to the front. But anyway, I just... I, Every time it, it was time to get off the plane, people stand up. Now, I don't know what the people up front are doing because you can only go as fast as the person in front of you. So, what takes you so long to get your stuff out of the bin? You get out of your seat, get your stuff, and walk that away. There's only one way you can go. Go that way. What are you doing? And I just, I, human behavior fascinates me. And I just want to know... What takes you so long to get off this damn plane? Now, the other two scenarios, that same thing. People at the ATM, what are you doing? What takes you so, are you applying for a mortgage? I mean, what takes you so long to go to go up there, put your card in, boop, 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 get your money or deposit whatever you got to deposit, and then go. Just get your card and your receipt and go. What, what takes you so damn long? That, and then women in the bathroom. Now, you can defend women in the bathroom all you want to. Women take too long in the bathroom. That's why there's always a long-ass line. What are you doing in there? I, I don't believe I have ever gone into a public restroom and taken, you know, more than five minutes total. And, you know, I wash my hands. I dry my hands after I go. I'm doing all that. Why are you in there so long? What are you doing in there? I know what you do when you make it a mess. Because you you're, I was a janitor in a, a high school briefly when I was in college. And so I've seen dirty bathrooms. I've had to clean my share of dirty bathrooms. I did it for a brief time, not for a long time, but long enough. The boys' bathroom was always way cleaner than the girls. Always. Now I'm not saying there were never any there was never anything yucky to clean up, but girls in the bathroom are nasty. Women and girls are gross in the bathroom. And sometimes I would just go in and I would have to clean a stall. And I just have to stand there and look at it for a minute. Like, how did you even how did you even do that? Like, I'm trying to imagine the physics of it. Like, how, how did you do that? Because I, were you standing on your head to, how? You know, and then I put on my gloves and I clean whatever it is up. But like, how? So, I don't understand what takes women so long in the bathroom. And don't say it's because you're washing your hands and the men aren't. Because at least half of y'all don't wash your hands in the bathroom. It's not that. I don't know what the hell you're doing in that stall that takes you so long. I don't know if you're in there like, you know, making a sacrifice to the devil or I don't know what you're doing in there, but you leave a mess that looks like it needs an exorcism. I know that. We need a priest to come in there after you're done. I just like, why are you so gross? I just wonder what your bathroom looks like at home. I mean, is it like this at home? I don't know. What takes you so long in the bathroom? What takes you so long at the ATM? And what the hell takes you so long to get off a plane? What are you doing? Get off. Go. There's a whole bunch of people behind you. You know what it is. It's the people walking through the airport. La, la, la. La, la, la. It's those people because they're getting off the plane the same way. Woo, I want to look around the plane for a minute. Huh? My bag? I have a bag? Oh, I do have a bag. Hmm, where is it? Which one of these overhead compartments did I put it in? I don't know. <sighs> I'm going, I'm going. And that's what they do. They just, they take all damn day and I don't get it. So, air travel. I don't mind it. I actually kind of see it as an adventure. It doesn't bother me. And and so, you know, I've been on eight planes this week. And uh, no, no, not eight. Four. Four total. I've had, yeah, four. Sorry. Not eight. Four. Yeah. So, 
and that was my experience every time going to get off the plane. It takes them, it takes forever to get off the plane, even though we weren't that far back. It's still, we had to just wait and wait and wait and wait. Like, okay, they, they y'all can get off. I mean, they've got the little gate, they got the door open, they're standing there. What's the hold up? That's what I don't understand. It takes for freaking ever for people to get off a plane, and I don't know, I don't know why. Maybe if somebody's a pilot or a flight attendant, they can explain it. Because I sure would like to know what takes people so long to get off. I don't, I don't know. Because see, I have a lot of anxiety, so for me, it, it it really freaks me out because I'm sitting here playing through my head a hundred times me getting the bag out of the overhead bin, kind of like I rehearse my order for the drive-through. Because I, I, I have anxiety just compels me to do that for some reason. So I'm just sitting here. I'm just an I'm just an anxious mess the entire time. I'm waiting for these people to get their shit and go. Just like, well, you just come on. So maybe it seems longer than it actually is. I should have timed it, but I didn't. Um, so I I really enjoy air travel. I see it as it's like an adventure. It really is just an adventure, and to me, it's part of the it's part of the trip, and it's really kind of fun. I mean, I enjoy it. I do. I, I don't mind it a bit, and I love having. I didn't mind having the layover because it wasn't really long. But it gave me time to kind of sit there and just look at people and, you know, watch people, which I enjoy doing. So I, I didn't mind at all. And, um, but it does seem like I was having more fun in, with my air travel than most of the people in the airport. Most people look like they don't want to enjoy it very much. Um, I'm just glad that I can look at things differently and see it as, you know, kind of like a fun little adventure and not just something you have to get through. I enjoyed it. I did. I, I enjoyed getting to see the, the airport in Vegas and I got some pictures. Uh, there's this archway that you could get in, you know, like this Vegas thing. And I got my son to take my picture and I took his picture. Now my son, I'm going to tell you what, this whole trip, he, he told me ahead of time he was going to do this. He said, mom, I'm going to show my friends my pictures and in every picture I'm going to look so bored. I'm going to tell them how boring this trip was. I said, what? So in every picture, he's like, he doesn't smile in any of the pictures at all. He did have a good time, but it doesn't look like it in the pictures. It looks like he is just absolutely miserable. Even when we went to Antelope Canyon, we went to Antelope Canyon, Horseshoe Bend, uh, Glen Canyon Dam. We went to um, shoot Grand Canyon, Hoover Dam. Those were two separate. We did two day trips to go see all that. And he, I think he enjoyed, he said he liked the Grand Canyon trip better because our our guide for the Grand, the Grand Canyon trip was hilarious. He was so funny. It was, it was really, he made it, he made it even more fun. He was a very funny guy. Um, but uh, yeah, so air travel to me is, it's fun. I like it. Um, as long as I'm not rushed, like as long as I'm not freaking out or stressing about getting to my next flight or whatever. I find it to be very fun. I, I, I enjoy it. Um, I don't plan to fly anywhere else anytime soon, but when I do, I will be looking forward to it because to me, it's just like an adventure. I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't dread it. I, I see it as kind of a fun, a fun adventure. And this trip was definitely an adventure and that was just part of it. But I thought I would just talk about my experiences and my thoughts on air travel a little bit before I forget them all. I probably forgot some stuff. I actually made some notes, but I don't know where my notes are some of my observations about air travel. Um, so I, I think it's fun. I just think it's an interesting way to kind of observe human nature in, a, in an environment that I don't normally see. And it's just really interesting. So, but will I buy any fancy luggage? No, I will stick with my old, you know, Oliver Twist looking luggage that looks like I'm hopping on the back of a truck in the middle of the depression to go out west and pick oranges so I can survive. I mean, that's probably what my luggage would look like, especially compared to most of the luggage that I saw in the airports. Like, wow, everybody here has way nicer shit than I do. That's okay. No, I'm not going to buy any more luggage. I've looked at a lot of it online, but I'm, I'm not going to buy it. Because every time I see the price, it stops me like, why would I pay, why would I pay that? I, the luggage I have is fine. It works perfectly fine. I, if I traveled a lot, I might invest in some lighter, lightweight, you know, luggage maybe. I don't know. But I don't travel a lot, so there's really no reason to buy it. So I don't buy it. So anyway. But I have to get going. My older son and I are going somewhere this afternoon, and I have some stuff I need to get done before that. And I'm still trying to get to, back to feeling normal. Like, I just, I feel weird being here. It's, it's, 
I don't know. I just feel it feels strange being back here, <laughs> and so I have to get I have to get back to feeling a little bit more normal. And hopefully, I will be able to do that. But at least I have I have today, tomorrow, and Sunday before I have to go back to work. So I, you know, hopefully by Monday morning I will be. Oh God, Monday morning is gonna suck. That's gonna be so depressing. I have to go to, get up and go to work. Ugh. That is going to really suck. You know, some vacations I come back and I don't feel that way. But this one, I really don't want to go back to work. I just, well, I see, here's the thing. I, I took my work laptop with me because I was going to go through my emails every night. Because I get a lot of, I get about 200 emails a day for my, my job, my day job. And uh, I was just going to at least go through and kind of triage the emails and sort, you know, just kind of get them you know, kind of organized, just take like 20 minutes a night and just look through them and, you know, sort them out a little bit. But then I found out to use the Wi-Fi, you can use two devices on the Wi-Fi at Caesars Palace. If you want to use any more than that, it's $14.95 per device per day. And I thought, I'm not paying $14.95 a day to check my work email. I'm pointing at my laptop severe. I'm not paying $15 a day to check my work email. Screw that. They're not going to reimburse me for that. Mm -mm. I'll just check it when I get home. So um, I got back last night and I spent about, oh, it was over an hour. I had over, I had like, actually I only had about six, a little over 600 emails. I was expecting to have more, but I only had about 600. But I had to go through them all and flag some of them. And I color code them depending on what they are and what I need to do. And some of them I don't have to do anything. And those I can just dump in a folder. But it took me over an hour Oh, it took me, ugh, it's like an hour and a half last night to go through all those emails. But uh, uh, I don't want to go back to work. I really don't. Well, because, I mean, I know I have a lot of shit waiting for me, but it'll be okay. Got to get back to normal eventually. Got to get got to get back to everyday life. Is a, I guess that's what I'll be doing. But there, I, I did make video while I was there. I made quite a bit of video. Um, I'm going to have to take the audio out of a lot of it because everywhere you go in Vegas, there's loud music playing. And because of co copyright issues, I cannot include that. Um, I just, I can't copyright. So, yeah. So I'll have to record voiceovers. But I think tonight, no, 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 before we go, I'm going to make a video showing some of the items that I bought and some of the items that my son bought while we were in Vegas. Uh, just like a little show and tell thing. And then I'm going to do at least one video, maybe two, talking about my experiences and showing pictures like over here, some of the pictures I took. And um, yeah, so I'll do that. Um, I also made a video in Omega Mart. I'm going to show that. I made a video in the Venetian, Circus Circus, Caesars Palace. Um, I didn't really make any video on our day trips because I just wanted to enjoy that. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't really make any video on the day trips because I just, it didn't, I didn't want to. I felt like, no, I just want to enjoy this, these experiences with my son. I'm not going to spend the whole time doing this right here. So I didn't. Um, yeah, so I, I do have, oh, and we went in the Bonanza gift shop, this really big gift shop. I made a video in there. Um, yeah, there's a, a lot. I made a video of a lot of shit. <laughs> so I have to go through it all, strip out the audio, and record voiceovers. So you're going to be seeing Vegas videos for quite a while. They're going to pop up on a regular basis for a while. But thank you so much for watching and for being here. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to see if I can get ready to do this video really quick before we go anywhere. But thank you for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you again soon.